Hello, this is Mike with the NetPix Options Academy. In this installment of our trade of the week, we're going to go back and take a look at our Netflix trade from last week, see how that played out for us uh, throughout this week, and then we'll take a look at Amazon. We're going to take a look at putting on a bullish position in Amazon for next week, anticipating a bounce off of some, off of some oversold conditions. So we'll get to that one in just a second. But going back to our Netflix trade last week, if you haven't had a chance to watch that video, highly recommend that you go back and review it because there's a lot of great concepts that we talked through on how we could play a potential pullback or a period of chop in Netflix. And the reason we talked through that, if you take a look at this daily chart of Netflix, you can see that in a period of about a week and a half, we saw a 30% move to the upside on Netflix. Now, a lot of that move was due to earnings. Earnings were out here a couple weeks ago, had a phenomenal response to those earnings, really big move. So anytime you start to see a 30% move in a, in a week's time, you know that your chances are you're going to see a consolidation phase. You're going to see a pullback. So I wanted to put on a slightly bearish position last week. Now, instead of just buying a put option, the problem there, as we talked through in, in last week's video, if you buy a put option, the only way you can make money is if you get a move to the downside and it happens quickly. Otherwise, you're going to miss out. The time decay is going to add up and it's going to suck the premium out of the option. So what we did instead is we sold a call spread. We took a look at this chart, said, hey, we're overbought here. Let's go ahead and sell a call spread. That's a bearish position, but it also allows me to make money if Netflix just moves sideways, which essentially is what happened. I mean, we did pull back slightly, but it wasn't a significant pullback. We're still right up near the high. So let's go ahead and review the trade here. Let's go over to the trade page. So what we did, we went into the weekly options expiring today. We put this trade on um, last week. So we had a week um, for this trade to play out. What we did is we went to the call options and we sold an out of the money call spread. We sold the 130, 132 call spread. So that meant we were selling the 130 call and then we bought the 132 call option to make it a risk to find trade. Now I had some questions come in on this. Why did we buy the call option? Isn't that gonna lose money? Yes, that's exactly what we want to have happen. I want this whole thing to expire worthless. The reason I bought that 132 call is to give me protection on the upside. Just in case Netflix didn't pull back, just in case it did go higher, I capped my loss. Okay, I limited my loss. So even though I lost money on that side of the trade, I more than made up for it on the money that I made on the 130 call that I sold. So what happened here? We put this trade on initially for 51 cents last week. So $51 per spread. We were risking around $150. So we had a risk three to make one scenario, which initially at first glance doesn't sound great. The trade-off there is we had so many ways of making money. Our break-even point was at 130.51. Okay, as long as Netflix closed below 130.51, I made money. If it moved higher, if it moved sideways, if it moved lower, I made money in all three market scenarios. If time decay added up, if volatility decreases. That gave me five different ways of making money. Now, I didn't get the volatility to decrease, but everything else lined up for me. So I had multiple ways and multiple combinations of making money. And uh, take a look at the price of the spread now. It's trading for nothing. It's trading for zero here today. This thing is going to expire worthless, and that's exactly what I wanted to have happen. When I collect that $51 up front per spread to put the trade on, that's my maximum profit potential. Okay, so I could put this trade on 10 times and still only have a, you know, a little over $1,000 of risk. So really, a, just a phenomenal trade, regardless of your account size. You know, your minimum requirement per contract, you're going to type around $150 per contract. So very realistic trade, even if you have a small account size. So if you put it on a couple times, you're talking about $100 of profit, $200 of profit here this week. The cool part about this trade is we didn't need a big move. Netflix kind of drifted to the downside. We made money. I looked at this trade for maybe five minutes all week. I didn't have to sit there and stare at charts all day long. I knew what my risk was. I knew what my max profit was on the trade, and I just let the trade work. But remember, I only needed it to close below 130.51. I don't care if it was at 100 or 90 or 80. Regardless of how low it went, as long as it was below my break-even point, I made money. So just a really great trade here. Full profit, full target was reached. And now we just let the trade expire worthless. We don't have to pay the commissions to close it out. 
That's also a nice fact, uh, a nice feature of this trade. We just let the whole thing expire worthless and we move on to the next trade. So just for those of you that took the trade, just a really great trade. Hopefully you're starting to see the benefit in these types of positions. So we're going to kind of go back to the well here and we're just going to switch it up. We're going to go to Amazon, but we're going to take a look at the, the same principles here. If we take a look at a chart of Amazon, Amazon did essentially the exact opposite of what Netflix did after earnings. We've seen a nice little pullback, right? I mean, we've seen a move from around $847 a share at the high. We were all the way down. We we're near 750 or so on the downside here this week. So a $100 move to the downside. When you start to see that type of a move, we're probably near a, a, an extreme on the downside um, here this week. Not necessarily saying Amazon is going to bounce back up to the highs, but there's a good chance that it either settles into a range here, consolidates, or bounces to the upside. So how can I potentially play that move? Like we talked about on Netflix, I don't want to just buy a call option here because I only have one way of making money. I would need Amazon to move to the upside in a big way. And it has to do so quickly. Otherwise, I, I lose money. Now, we know we have some uncertainty next week. We've got the upcoming elections. So instead of being highly aggressive and just buying a call option here, I'm going to go ahead and sell a put spread. Selling a put spread is actually a bullish position. All right, so let's go over to the trade page here and take a look at this. Let's switch this from Netflix to Amazon. And we'll get rid of that Netflix trade. I hate to delete it off my screen because it was such a great trade, but we got to move on. We've got to get capital to work here. So looking at that chart of Amazon, I want a bullish position on. So we're going to take a look at the weekly options expiring next Friday. So we have seven days um, to hold on to this trade. And we're going to go to the put side. I want to sell an out-of-the-money put spread. So what I'm going to do, one of the columns that I have on my trade page, you can't see the title here because I'm trying to make the visuals bigger so it's easier for you to see for those of you watching the video. The probability out-of-the-money column. Okay, what that's going to tell me here, I want to go to the option that has around a 65% chance of closing out of the money. That has me looking at the 745 put. Okay, if I go ahead and right click on that, right click and I'm going to go to sell, I'm going to go to vertical. That pops up a put spread down at the bottom. Now, I want to go ahead, if I sell the 745 put, I want to go out two strikes. I want to go down to the 740 put and I want to buy that one to make this a risk defined trade. Just like we talked about on Netflix last week, I want to have a nice profit potential, but I also want to hedge my risk. I want to have a risk-defined trade. Right? I feel much more comfortable doing that in my own trading. So um, I just, I'm not a big fan of selling naked options. I don't like the unlimited risk. So I'm not just going to go in and sell the 745 put. Even though I would have much more profit potential, it would also come with much more risk. I'm not willing to make that sacrifice. So here, if we sell a five-point wide put spread, let's go ahead and click on confirm and send. In the order confirmation box that pops up, I'm collecting $145 per spread right up front. That is my maximum profit potential. My maximum risk is $355. So that's the most I can lose on the trade. Sure, you're going to add in a few dollars for commissions there. But a lot of people get intimidated by Amazon saying, hey, it's a $760 stock. The options are very expensive. I don't have the account size to manage that risk. Well, here's a way for $350 per spread, I'm able to control 100 shares of Amazon. I can put on a bullish position. Now, all of a sudden, you're taking a high flyer, and you're really reducing that cost. It's really realistic regardless of the account size that you're working with. My break-even point is at $743.55. You take a look at the current price of Amazon. It's at $758.54. So I've got around $15 below us here. Amazon can move $15 against us next week, and I can still make money. I don't care if Amazon uh, moves higher, lower, or sideways. In a perfect world, it's either sideways or higher, because this is a, a slightly bullish position. But I do have a little wiggle room just in case I'm dead wrong. Right? So I don't care if it closes at 743.56. As long as it's one penny above my break-even point, I can make money on this trade. I also make money if volatility decreases. I also make money if time decay adds up, just like we talked about on Netflix. So I have five different ways of making money here. We've seen a nice pickup in volatility this week. The VIX um, got up to 23 today. 
So anytime you get up to those levels, now you know that options are starting to get a little pricey. They're starting to get a little expensive. So if volatility decreases next week, that would also benefit my position. So much like Netflix, when I sell this premium, when I collect a dollar forty-five up front, ideally I want that trade to go to zero. I want it to expire completely worthless. Let all the ex options expire worthless. That way I don't have to pay the commissions. I just let the trade close and book my profit. Now, if I put this trade on today, the nice part about this, I don't have to watch this really closely all, all week next week. I already know where my break-even point is. I can come in once a day and say, you know, or I can see, is Amazon above 743.55? If it is, there's nothing I need to do. Right? So I really like this trade. And the nice part about where we're at at the moment in the market, we're coming out of earnings season. So a lot of stocks are at, at overbought or oversold extremes. We played Netflix last week. We're looking to play Amazon this week. You could do the same type of strategy on Facebook if you wanted to. On Apple, there's a lot of extremes in the market right now that you can take advantage of. We're taking a look at one here today with Amazon. So really like this position. It's a way that you can get some capital uh, to work here with a neutral to slightly bullish position. See if the market decides to, to consolidate or bounce for us here. We've seen six days in a row to the downside in the S&P 500. So probably a pretty good chance heading into next week that we do get a, at least an attempt at a rally. And this type of trade would benefit from that. So really like this position. It worked out really well for us on Netflix last week. And we'll see if we can continue the nice action um, heading into next week. So this is our trade of the week. Again, it's the you know, weekly options. I'm selling the Amazon 745, 740 put spread. And I'm collecting $1.45 to do so. So I will go ahead and get this trade placed. We'll be back next week to take a look, see how it ended up playing out for us. If you have any questions on this or need more details, feel free to send me an email directly. My personal email is mike at netpicks.com, and I'll be more than willing to answer any questions that you might have. So um, enjoy your weekend, everybody. I'll be back next week to take a look. Congratulations um, to those of you that, taught, that took the, uh, the Netflix trade last week. Really nicely done. So we will talk to you guys all next week.